Welcome back. In this lesson, we look at contrast in a scene and how it affects exposure. Our eyes are amazing devices when it comes to adjusting to different light levels. For instance, when you are in a dimly lit room, you can see a lot of detail, even in the dark corners. Now, in the same light conditions, a camera will not pick up that detail as well as the eye. Our eyes have a wide range of contrast. That is, we can resolve many tones between the darkest and lightest area of a scene. A camera is limited to the tones that can be processed, and it depends on the level of technology and design of the cameras. Cameras used in feature films are sophisticated and expensive. When a scene is lit out of the contrast specifications of a camera, we run into exposure problems. This scene has purposefully been shot out of the contrast range and the frame of the scene exhibits a very bright area and a very dark area. A typical problem occurs. Either detail is lost in the dark part of the scene by exposing down to show detail in the bright areas, or detail is lost in the bright areas by exposing up to show details in the dark areas. We can expose for the window to see the detail and then light into the dark part of the scene. Now we can see detail in both areas of the scene. In effect, what we have done is close the gap between the darkest area and the lightest area in terms of contrast. So to avoid the extreme exposure conditions that require overexposure or underexposure, we light the scene within the camera's contrast limit or we decide which areas of the scene are more important. Is it okay just to see the window and its detail? Or is it okay just to see the clock area and its associated detail? It all depends on the narrative. We are talking about the contrast ratio, that is how many tones a camera can resolve between the darkest area and the lightest area of the scene. These two grayscale charts demonstrate the range of tones that can be resolved by different cameras. So the chart on the left shows a low contrast resolution compared to the higher contrast resolution to the chart on the right. The chart on the left has a lower contrast ratio than the chart on the right. When the chart with fewer grades or tones is exposed up or down, you can see how the tones merge very quickly. This is what dictates the depth of the picture. The more contrast that is available, the more creative the DOP can be when lighting the scene. It took years for the digital camera to reach the contrast ratios of the film-based cameras. The science of this topic is beyond the scope of this course. However, there is a link in the attached literature for you to read. Today, a camera's contrast ratio is specified in stops. A good digital camera would show between 12 to 16 stops, a far cry from the contrast ratios of earlier video cameras, which resolved half the tones in the modern camera. I will see you in the next lesson.